Another big question is, what is the point of practicing technique? I think that we all know that we should. I think that we've all been given technique stuff to do by teachers and those of us who are diligent students do it. Um, but don't think to ask, why am I doing this? What am I trying to get out of this? So I wanted to address that question as well, because I think it's important if you're doing something, you need to understand why, or you're not going to get as much out of it as you otherwise would. When you practice technique, you are increasing your knowledge and your ability to play various things on your instrument automatically. So to use a specific example, when you started on your instrument, you learned some scale to start with. If you started on piano, you learned C major scale first. For me, I started on violin and we, we learned A major one octave as our first scale. And when you learned your first scale, it was really hard for you because you didn't have any frame of reference, right? And you had to remember, you know, the notes you play C major on piano is relatively easy, right? Because it's just the white keys, but you have to remember like where you, you shift and, and shift your hand. Um, on string instruments, you have to remember like where the half steps and whole steps lie, right? And what the spacing is between your fingers. There's a lot to think about, but as you get more advanced, the, the fingering and the notes in the scale become totally automatic, right? If you have been playing piano for a number of years, C major scale is so easy. You don't have to think about the fingering at all because it's really automatic. For me as a string player to play A major one octave, that's trivial. It's like so easy. There's nothing to think about. So when you've been playing for a while, these basic building blocks of music, scales, arpeggios, what have you, they become really easy. You don't have to think about them, which frees your brain up to think about other things while you're playing. All of us have limited brain space, right? I think all of us have experienced trying to do too many things at once. And then you start making all sorts of mistakes and your brain just feels like it's going to explode. When that happens, you have overloaded your working memory. So working memory is um, the things you're holding in mind right now, like at the top of your mind that you are using in some way that are not sort of stored in your long-term memory that aren't automatic things in terms of automatic knowledge or automatic physical skills. When you have something that's using up your entire working memory and you try to think about something else on top of that, it's not going to work. So to use a musical example, it's not uncommon for people to feel like, okay, I can play the notes and rhythms just fine, but you asked me to do the dynamics and now everything I keep messing, no messing up notes and things aren't working well. That's because you overloaded your working memory. Your working memory was using up its full capacity to play the correct notes and rhythms. Now you've added dynamics into that. It's too much. So something is going to get messed up because because your, your focus now is dynamics, notes and rhythms are going to go out the window. But if the notes and rhythms are easy and they're really automatic for you, you still have space in your working memory capacity and you can add in the, um, the dynamics. Absolutely no problem. An analogy that I use for this that I originally got from a student. So thanks to this uh, student for this analogy is overloading your working memory capacity is like putting too much food in your grocery bag, right? If you just keep piling food in, then you pick up the bag and the handles break or the bottom falls out and then your food goes flying all over the place. You would have been way better off just having two bags, right? Rather than overloading that one bag with so much stuff, it just explodes when you pick it up. That's kind of like what it's like when you overload your working memory capacity, it explodes and everything goes all over the place. So the way we increase our working memory capacity is that we put more things into long-term memory, that they become automatic in terms of knowledge or physical skills. When you practice technique, you are increasing your long-term memory for various skills for the various building blocks of playing. So with an example of a C major scale, if you've been playing for a while, that's really automatic. You don't have to think about the fingering. It's in your muscle memory. You definitely don't have to think about what notes are in the C major scale, right? And so that is brain space that is not being used that you can use for something else. So the reason why technical work, technical fundamentals are such an important part of all musical learning is that it increases our working memory capacity because a whole bunch of stuff that then gets pushed into long-term memory and you don't have to think about it. That's also why it's really difficult to play pieces that are too hard for you. And I know it's very discouraging as a student to hear from a teacher, this is too hard for you. You can't play it. Often it's hard to know what does that mean? What that means is you don't have the requisite skills automatic and in your long-term memory. And so they're going to be eating up your working memory capacity to the point that it's too much stuff at once 
and you won't be able to do it. You need to have more information stored in your long-term memory. You need to have more things automatic for you before you'll be able to handle the demands of that harder piece. To give a specific example of this, imagine you're playing a piece in B flat major, a key that you're very comfortable with, and it modulates to D flat major, only the key signature doesn't, doesn't change. There's just a whole bunch of flats that appear all of, all of a sudden out of nowhere in your music. And you've never really played in D flat major before. Maybe you sort of know your D flat major scale, but it's, it's new and it's not very comfortable. It's gonna be really hard for you to play that section in D flat major because one, you may not recognize that it's in D flat major. You just might see all of these flats all of a sudden and get really overwhelmed. Even if you do recognize it's in D flat major, if the key of D flat major is not a concept that is familiar and comfortable for you, you're gonna to have to keep track of all those additional flats individually. And that is a lot of information for your brain to hold on to, rather than just knowing, okay, D flat major has five flats. I know what they are. I don't have to think about it. Of course it's in D flat major. Of course I'm gonna have G flats now. When you have that automatic knowledge of the notes that belong in D flat major, you don't have to keep track of individual pieces of information and it's a lot easier to play, especially if it goes fast, right? If you have to think about every single individual flat, that's really gonna slow you down versus just knowing it as a concept.